what were your initial impressions when you came to TCC? Um, at the time, 68, 69, college started in September 65. Uh, I've seen the statistics of our demographics at that time. Probably not that many African American students in 68, 69 when you were here. Right. What, what were your initial thoughts and when you were here? And what, what were your impressions? Well, you're right. Uh, TCC was four years old, I think, when, when I started uh, here, and very few African Americans or other students of uh, color. But keep in mind that I was 30 years old, had a good job, still wanted the education. I had a, I had a full life. I didn't, I didn't uh, come here just to be a student, if you will. And so, uh, and so my impression was probably more riveted on uh, the education piece uh, and et cetera. But, but what, I've, what I found uh, is uh, there was uh, people here who were very uh, supportive in, in nurturing. And, of course, I needed uh, all of that. Uh, they, they helped me immensely to try and uh, map out uh, uh, a pathway uh, forward uh, for me. But, but then most of the other people, and maybe it's because of the newness of the campus, campus was really pretty much indifferent to the, the plight and interests of African American students. And so, um, and then of course during that period of time, uh, campuses across the country, uh, 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 black student uh, groups, uh, black student unions or whatever the name might be, was uh, growing all over the place as we tried to uh, uh, have these public institutions to live up to their missions of uh, inclusiveness and, and all of those kind of things. But we were feeling excluded and not very welcoming. And so that gave rise to the uh, black student uh, movement across the country. And the same happened with uh, uh, TCC, and so because of that situation, we formed the, uh, well, we named it the OB Society. We didn't want to just be thought of as a black student union. Uh, and uh, OB in Swahili, uh, the meaning was soul. And so we, we, we formed a group um, because we uh, wanted uh, the better recognition uh, uh, to be able to uh, use uh, some of the uh, uh, student uh, uh, services money that was available for various activities for clubs and organizations on campus. And, and of course, um, well, there might have been uh, two or three um, uh, black uh, teachers and uh, 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 Asian American uh, staff was very, very low. So we wanted that. And of course, there was no representation of people of color on the, on the board. It was almost unheard of. So when you first came here, were there, who were some, were there some of the people that you remember as role models that were early faculty or, or counselors or whatever? Yes, there are two people that I, and I hope not, I hope I'm not overstating it. I really thanked, uh, saved, if not, if they didn't save my life, they saved me from bodily harm, and that was uh, Bill Muse and um, Joe Kosai. Uh, never met them before, um, but, but uh, they were wonderful. They gave us great advice, they encouraged us, they supported us, uh, and so it was, uh, was, was Joe wonderful. The, what was Joe's position at the time? Was he in charge of student services? Or? I think I think he was. And uh, then Bill was faculty, right? He was faculty in biology. I, right. I think yeah. it was. He taught biology. Yeah, yeah. But but it was not so much um, their role definition, their def their activities, and mm -hmm. their job definition. Right. It was the relationship uh, part of it because uh, uh, I would. I, I never took a course from, from uh, Muse or had any other connections, but um, uh, they were there for us because uh, of the uh, connection of what we were trying to deal with. Mm -hmm. 
and unbeknownst to me, of course, it's an obvious uh, deal that uh, they had gone through their trials and tribulations as well, and so the connection was there, and they were just very supportive. And I said that the uh, bodily harm uh, kind of uh, notion was uh, we had an incident here on the on the campus. Uh, um, there was a big uh, boulder in the middle of the uh, campus, and still here. Oh, is it? Okay. It was. It became the symbol of us trying to get established here at uh, Tacoma Community College, and the resistance we were receiving from the other uh, students uh, uh, to what we were doing. And so, uh, we had uh, painted the rock uh, black to symbolize the. We're here to stay and solid and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, overnight, uh, a couple of times when we'd come back to campus, it had been painted white. And so we, we had this thing going on. And so I was at a meeting uh, at the Urban League uh, downtown and received a call, myself and about four other students, because we were meeting with people from the community to see how they could be supportive of what was going on. And so they called and said, you need to get back out at uh, campus. Uh, the white students were painting the rock there in, in midday. And so we raced back out here and, and, uh, and uh, to the, uh, the rock location. And it just seemed like uh, every student on this campus uh, was there. And we came up from the 12th Street side, there's about five of us. And I just happened to have my uh, umbrella with me. It was a rainy day. And uh, we stood between this uh, big block of students and the rock. And uh, security was there and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Tacoma Police playing clothes was all over the place. And uh, they then uh, challenged us to charge uh, the students who were standing there, and because of the boulder and the building that was close by, we were trapped. We were uh, trapped, and the security uh, stepped out of the way. And um, and it was uh, Kosai and uh, uh, Bill Muse who uh, who stood between us and those uh, students. I remember I had my umbrella, my. Uh, Defense was going to be trying to jab people with the with the umbrella because we were trapped. We were, our backs were against this building, and so if they would have been able to uh, uh, get to us, I don't know what would have happened to us. But uh, they prevented that, and it was. Uh, they also told us at that moment that uh, the uh, President Ford uh, had agreed to. Uh, meet with the OB Society rep representatives to, uh, to discuss with him the uh, demands that we had uh, given to them and uh, they had not acknowledged uh, that it, no contact with us whatsoever. But so at that time you'd already given them the list of the yes. 11 demands? Yes, the, yes. The challenge that is a pretty good resource for that and talked about all of those right. the students here. Right. Did you feel like they were fairly accurate about what they were reporting, what's going on with what you were doing? The challenge? Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, uh, people that's in that business, they, they have to have a little Hollywood in them. They have to be, they have to kind of jazz it up, but pretty much uh, it, it was. But if you look at some of the writings, uh, uh, Fred Lowe was a, Minister of uh, Information for the OB Society and was a great writer. Uh, he had some great articles in there as well. But for the most part, uh, my recollection is that it was uh, reasonably well uh, reported. So how, were you president at the time when this incident happened? Uh, yes, I, I was the original uh, president and uh, because no one else would do it primarily, it was by it, it wasn't something we that I ran for. It it was uh, the last one uh, standing, and it it wasn't something I wanted to do because uh, I didn't have time. You know, when I finished class here, I was racing to work and all those kind of things, and so it wasn't a natural 
fit for me because I didn't spend a lot of time on campus and doing just uh, the student kind of things. I had um, uh, a life outside of, a uh, uh, full life outside of that and I have a lot of time. But I decided to to do it because no one else would, uh, would do it. And, and you felt strongly about the situation and what needed to be done. Oh yeah, I felt very strongly about that. There was no, there was no question uh, about that. But it's just trying to fit in, you know, the time and all the other things that was going on. And uh, it wasn't uh, um, uh, a lot of support for what we were talking about. So we had to, we had to hustle for everything that we were doing. So would you be able to estimate how many African-American students we had at the time at TCC? When no, that would just be guessing, but it was very, very small. And were they... How many people did you have involved in the OB Society? Do you know? Um, not really. Probably no more than uh, 15 to 17. It was a small group because uh, some of the students who were here, uh, African Americans, uh, didn't want anything to do with the Black Student Union. And one example of that, we we tried to get, I think they had two or three black basketball players, and they were starters. I mean. The team was built around them, mm -hmm. and uh, we couldn't get the um, the school to allow um, uh, black women to be cheerleaders. And so, uh, one of our strategies we thought was to, if we could get the uh, basketball players to to uh, say that they would they wouldn't play unless um, African American women would be able to be a part of the cheerleaders. And we even told them, just fake it. You don't have to, uh, let's be able to tell them that that's what would happen because we know that uh, they, they, they wanted you to play basketball, and so that might help us to, uh, to get in road, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. And so there, there were uh, more students on campus than we had really involved in the OB Society. That was a very small number of uh, people who uh, was really involved. So a while before this incident at the boulder that we were talking about, you had pre pre presented the list of demands to Dr. Ford and the administration. A month or two ahead or? I can't, I can't. No, no, it wasn't, uh, it was uh, almost uh, things were in, uh, in the moment. It wasn't uh, months ahead and mm -hmm. nothing's going on. Things were happening uh, Pretty quickly, and so um, it, it was uh, wasn't a long lag time from from when we uh, presented the demands because this opposition was building on campus uh, and the other students, mm -hmm. and so after I think they realized that uh, they needed to take some action that would take some of the steam out of this uh, hostility that was going on, and so they decided to uh, to meet with us and and discuss uh, the situation with us. But at the time that incident happened, I think it was May 5th, 1969, um, you hadn't heard anything back from them until Kosai and Muse told you at the time that, hey, the president's willing to meet Say, let me with you. Yeah. It, it, seems, it seems to me like you're, well, you want to talk a little bit about what happened after that then? Because you did meet with them. And, 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 and the board eventually did approve, uh, agree to at least some of those, uh, some of the demands. Right. You know, five or six of them anyway. I have a list here somewhere. But. Yes, and, and, and so we started to make some, uh, some progress uh, after that, the recognition of the OB Society and, and uh, 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 funds to to do some uh, educational enrichment kind of things that we thought was necessary, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, one of those things, uh, bringing uh, speakers to campus and, and uh, Muhammad Ali was one of those that we were able to, to bring to campus uh, because of that. The, the other breakthrough was um, um, we ended up um, getting the governor to appoint the first a black uh, trustee, uh, Dewey uh, Tuckle, as a result of that. And so we had a chance to um, go down to uh, Olympia to chat with the governor uh, about that. And uh, 
incidentally, that's uh, where I first met uh, uh, the woman who later became uh, my wife. She was on the staff at uh, uh, in the governor's office when we went down uh, for that. That was uh, that was uh, Evans. That's what I was thinking. Well, that's great. Well, that's where you met Marilyn. Okay, I didn't know that story. Oh, yeah. That's neat. Well, she was working on the ice staff at the time. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. Great. Thought we were crazy. She thought you were crazy. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, many uh, African Americans uh, did. You not not everyone. Um, you know, was too keen on you know protests and 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 uh, uh, making demands and all those kind of things. People were afraid of that, and especially people that had uh, good jobs. That was that was not something they wanted to put at risk. And so, uh, it wasn't unusual for people not to be African American people not to be supportive. It was that way in Texas. It was it was that way here, and so uh, that wasn't un unusual. So as a as an African American student growing up, how did I mean the the assassination of Malcolm X, of Martin Luther King, John Kennedy, uh, Robert Kennedy? I mean those things had to have an effect on you. Well, the certainly, and the and the one thing that had a major impact on me was uh, when Martin Luther King was assassinated because. I, as I said, I was working in West Coast Grocery at that time, and uh, um, um, the stars in my life had started to line up. I was uh, I was doing okay, uh, but when that happened, and I saw the reaction of uh, other people who were working in the warehouse with me at that time, they were kind of elated. Uh, he's got what what was coming to him, that kind of thing. And then I had to take stock of my own life, you know. I said, what am I doing that, that someone would care enough about that they would want to take my life? So uh, I must be doing the wrong thing because uh, I don't feel that kind of uh, threat and et cetera. And so I uh, gave up that good job and took a job uh, in the Model Cities program, a federally funded uh, mm -hmm. Model Cities program, to uh, try to be uh, more involved in uh, bringing about uh, the kind of change that uh, King was talking about. And so, uh, and of course, the difference in pay and all that was, was enormous, but uh, I just knew I needed uh, something else other than what I was doing. And and so that that was the big turnaround for me is uh, when King was uh, was assassinated. What was it like to be able to meet Muhammad Ali and to talk to him? Well, of course, um, Ali was um, the image of him was bigger than life because you know of, of not only what he accomplished as uh, one of the uh, most. Uh, socially significant uh, athletes during the 20th uh, century. And then the, to watch what was happening to a guy who was uh, at the top of uh, uh, that profession because he uh, became uh, uh, a Muslim. The, he adopted the, the um, Islam and he uh, re refused to um, resisted the the draft and so he fell out of favor just just because of all of that the system has a way of uh, of enforcing its uh, its rules if they don't like uh, your politics or what what you're doing so I think it was only possible for us to get Ali on this uh, campus in part because he had fallen out of favor but it was a historic event for those of us who were involved to be able to, to do that and be in his presence and uh, we were just in awe of, of Ali and it was a historic moment for us. Yeah, well, that's great. Um, it, there, it seems to me just from a distance watching you and your career over time that 
your experiences working with the uh, establishment, the established hierarchy here at the college as, as a fairly young person and trying to figure out how to negotiate that in a peaceful way to get some results, that that probably was a good skill for you in your history the rest of your working life. Uh, yes, very much so. But as I said earlier, uh, um, that orientation in my part uh, was ingrained in me from how I was raised. Uh, I wasn't raised any other way. I was not a revolutionary. Uh, 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 I, consistent with what I think uh, King was trying to do, we are trying to change the, the systems that we were all a part of. We were not trying to destroy, but to make uh, better. And so wanting the, the in, in, inclusion and the fairness and the equality on that are all things you do to try to modify systems. It wasn't in me to try to destroy anything. I was trying to build. That became an issue um, with other members of the uh, uh, OB Society because they wanted to take a different uh, tack that was being played out all over the country and was in the newspapers and all of that, but I realized that uh, there's no quicker way to self-destruction than to do that. Uh, with violence. With violence, because uh, the people in opposition have more guns, they have more power, they can justify almost anything they want to do to you. And so, uh, and so to me, you have to operate in a, in a different manner, using different skills that that uh, that are survivable and still make a difference. It's just a matter of what you're trying to accomplish. And I, I just didn't see a win by being uh, motivated by destroying as opposed to building. But uh, that was a real challenge for for my leadership and others uh, in the OB society. And so, TCC was kind of a place where all of those kind of values and things was tested mightily and uh and they have paid off in the in the end for me and uh, hopefully for others